We are sorry. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be. New world order. New world order. New world order. A new world order. It is a new world order. Significantly different and radically new challenges. And the hope that each of us has to build a new world order. What's wrong? Take four red capsules. In ten minutes, take two more. Help is on the way. Let's get to our guest, Justin King. He is with us now. What's up, buddy? Not much. How's it going? It's going. How you doing tonight, man? I'm doing all right. Doing all right. I just watched the footage, listened to yeah. a little bit of uh, you guys talking. <laughs> <laughs> he like laughed. <laughs> You're laughing at Jeff, right? I mean, okay, I'll read the body. <laughs> what I said. The thing is, I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm laughing at Jeff in the sense of. He actually has a very valid point, but he's no, he does. You know, I agree. I I do agree. With he, that. He's being Jeff. You know, he's coming across as a little bit yeah. more abrasive than <laughs> than most would. Right. <laughs> so what? All right. So we might as well get into it. So what is your uh, analysis on the video? We'll get. Let's talk about the video right now before we get into the other stuff. What's your analysis on the video? Well, th- this whole thing, the start to finish, I mean, the video included, but even sure. going all the way back, this, yep. is, this is a, a teachable moment for the, the, mm-hmm. for the American populace. <laughs> um, you, it, it, there were a number of mistakes made, you know, static warfare, you know, putting yourself in a siege is always a bad idea. I mean, everybody mm-hmm. that's ever watched a war movie knows Oh, I'm pinned down. That's a bad mm. thing. <laughs> yeah. When, a little bit. A little when, bit. When, when you occupy a building by force, you know, under under the force of arms, you, you're volunteering to be pinned down. That That's, I mean, it's a horrible idea. You know, I mean, it, it's not something I would ever recommend. As far as the video, you, you can learn a lot from it. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. Because it, it is textbook, all right? The way the cars are set up, it's right around a curve. You you don't see the roadblock until it's too late. They've got their engines facing oncoming traffic, which means you can't ram it. Right. You know, most, most local cops put their cars sideways. You know, true, you hit true. the trunk, your, your engine is lighter than their trunk. That's and a you good spin their car around and keep driving. You can't do that. With, with no. a federal roadblock, these guys were well trained. Right. You see that they had snipers off on each side of the road. Mm-hmm. So getting out and running on foot is a bad idea. Yep. But this whole this whole video occurred because they adopted a static, you know, a, a, a static position. You know, the feds knew where they were going to go. They knew exactly. where they were going to be. They had their communications. They live streamed. Their, you know, <laughs> their conversation. So the feds have all the intelligence they need. You know, somebody earlier during your show said, "Well, you know, I don't have any training." Well, you know what? These guys they may have had training, but it was bad training. Bad training. And I agree with that. Yeah. yeah. It, I would have been a better strategy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, bad, bad. bad training. Yeah, I, been no training. <laughs> There's no wow. training. No, no there's, that's like no, it's not that. That's why I was so against it because it just seems so totally unorganized and it looked. It, it, I mean, it was pretty ob. To me, it was obvious, but apparently to other people, it wasn't obvious because I think people were just kind of jumping on board just because they were, you know, quote unquote, standing up to the federal government. Yeah, yeah people that, got that's kind of dangerous in a way. To me, that's dangerous. 
They want the revolution it, to get started. They don't care. It, you know, and I, I actually I have a lot of sympathy for them in the sense that they were standing up and they were willing to put their sure. on the line. Sure, absolutely. But, dude. but I look at it a lot like you know Ferguson. You know, and I went to Ferguson, but mm-hmm. I, I look at it in the same the same vein. It's not the best cause, <laughs> you know. No, um, there, there, there could have been better. There were better reasons to, to make a stand. Um, so I, I just, yeah, I, I'm, I'm very. This is exactly how the second they took over this building, this is how it was going to play out. I'm, I'm the only thing I'm surprised about is that they're all not dead. Yeah. Um, because you know every. Especially in the the three percent movement, the militia movement, everybody wants to you know make that stand. You know they want to relive the Alamo. The problem is everybody died at the Alamo. Yeah. Everybody, I was going to say that everyone died at the Alamo. <laughs> it's true though, it, dude. I mean, that's um, not, it is. Yeah. It's not strategically sound. If you look at the people that were actually able to defeat, technologically advanced, and you know especially, you know, if they have numerical superiority, they stayed mobile. You know, you have to look at the Viet Cong, the insurgents in Afghanistan and Iraq. You can't look at Davy Crockett, you know. Yeah. But, I mean, so it's it's a learning moment. It should be a learning moment. It's more like General Custer. Yeah. I'm I'm very, I'm, I'm disappointed because I do. I see a lot of people saying, well, we need to go out there. Do what? Do well, what? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's that's a horrible idea. You, you can't. You, you, if a battle is over, showing up to where they're all, where the opposition is already mobilized and waiting for you because you're talking about it on Facebook. <laughs> that's that's a bad idea in a long string of bad ideas. You stay at home, wait for the next fight. You know. Uh, they needed someone a little bit smarter to lead it, I think. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure exactly the situation. I mean, I, I wish I looked into it a little bit more, but wasn't the guy who was, like, mainly in charge, I'm not talking about Bundy, but wasn't the guy who was influencing everything some sort of, like, ex-convict who, like, broke some dude's nose because he disrespected him the wrong way or something? Uh, are you talking about Santilli or... Not Santilli. There was another guy involved who was like a kind yeah, of... Yeah, Santilli is a whole different story. Yeah, that's... Yeah, exactly. Obviously. That guy is a bit sketchy. We should get into that <laughs> yeah. after, but... I, yeah. I can't say if he's 100% <laughs> FBI or not. A lot of people are claiming um, a, a, a guy uh-huh. just uh, posted a, something like an FBI transcript. I, I don't know how legit it is, but he could be FBI. He's definitely an asshole. Santilli is an asshole. He cheated and stole from a lot of people and lies and manipulates. I mean, he stole a Facebook page, supposedly. <laughs> he stole a Facebook page of 200, 000, that had 200,000 fans and changed it to, like, the Pete Santilli show. <laughs> How low is that? You know? Who does that? <laughs> Who does that? That's hilarious. <laughs> oh, my God. You know? Yeah, these, I mean, yeah, these guys were not... Uh... They they were not the cream of the crop, you know. Um, so, yeah, yeah it, it's a tragedy. This guy's dead. Okay, it's a tragedy. It certainly, from what I could from what I could tell from the video, it did not look like a a a textbook shooting. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it'll be ruled justified. I mean, of course, the guy. Well, because well, of his well absolutely, yeah, of course. And, but I, I don't, I don't know that in reality the grounds were there to fire. But it, it doesn't matter. No, I mean, it doesn't. That, that's what I'm trying to say. That, yeah. The FBI put it on their own YouTube page. They think they're in the right if they're going to do that. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they're not mm-hmm. worried. That's no, they don't they, care. They, yeah. They're, well, they don't have to be worried because the second these guys did this, yeah. I mean, all the FBI has to do is redo the charges redo the, the criminal complaint and they could have killed all of them and it doesn't matter because of the severity of what they were doing and, and the terms they used while doing it um, you know for this to, to swing to a terrorism charge is, is just the whim of the prosecutor it's all in how they frame it 
So I don't uh, – I, I wouldn't expect, you know, there to be a civil rights investigation over this. I, I don't see it. I mean, doubtfully, the, the little boy guy seems like a, you know, a very likable guy. A lot of people like him. I mean, some guy messaged me last night claiming that he's friends with them or whatever. So, I mean, I'm definitely not going to knock the guy, but the guy made some stupid moves, whatever. Whatever. It is what it is. Right. And, and that's the thing, is that, you know, he he was doing what he thought was right. Okay? With, and he, he was willing to put his life on the line to do it. That alone, right. you know, garners him re- some respect. Sure. At the same time, the rest of the activist world needs to pay attention to this very carefully and, and, and learn from it. Because if there's anything that can good that can come out of this, it's that people don't adopt this stance anymore. Because this only ends in the occupiers being killed or captured. You can't show me another example of it playing out a different way. Right. That's what happened. And the guy martyred himself, though, dude. I mean, I, I never, I've always, like, talked crap on martyrs, and, like, I never respected martyrs, but this is, it, it is different. And the guy is doing that to set an example and to teach a lesson and to show people how corrupt the federal government is. We don't need any more examples. This guy, if he's a good guy, which I believe he is, his life isn't worth it. His life isn't worth that example. In my opinion, it's not because we already know the government's corrupt. We don't need him to sacrifice his life. He's got 11 children who are all going to miss him terribly. And like I said, he put a lot of people's lives at risk by doing that. 18-year-old girl in the car, seven other people in the car. You just don't do that. I mean, and like Chris said, you know, he may not have been thinking rationally because adrenaline, whatever. Sure. I mean, you still have at least a few seconds to decide, okay, these cops are pointing their guns at me. Should I should I try to drive past them? I mean, that's like – whatever, dude. That's like a death wish right there. And that interview he had like a, like a couple weeks ago, whatever, with uh, mainstream television, during his interview, he – it's like it's like you could see it then in his interview. He was basically like, I'm going to stand my ground, and I'm going to keep my gun on, up on me, and if they come to me to try to serve their warrants and try to bring put a gun on me, I'm going to shoot them. <laughs> He's not going to live through that. He was expecting to die. But, and you that, know, he, uh, he mm. exited his vehicle, and he got away from that vehicle because he was probably fearing they would fire upon that vehicle, yeah. you know, full of people. Yeah, yeah that's so what that's I, yeah. one rational thing he did. Thank you, they Michael. end up shooting at the vehicle anyway? I don't know. Really? They said there was a lot of... Uh, I mean, that's the thing. I hear all these conflicting reports. We had no sound with that video, so we don't know how... You can see in the video something going on. Like the, yeah. Well, I didn't see no window you flying saw, I mean, out. Yeah, or saw like, that light going off there. Was, someone was shooting something. Something was going yeah. off. That, oh, that was, I'm fairly certain that was uh, those were concussion grenades. You think? Okay, uh, okay. Right. All right. Thrown by the How car. The yeah, I saw that. I That's didn't get crazy. to look at it. Yeah. And I, I think that was the the FBI's way of making certain that the people in the vehicle were going to be, you know, deaf and dumb when they when they right. went to extract exactly. them and pull them out. Um, Scare them out, you know. Those things are that, loud. Right, yeah. and that came after that. I mean, that was like a little, that was like, I don't know, another 10, 15 seconds later after they did them. Then we started seeing that in the video. Well, so. she... One of the witnesses, the girl, the female, claimed that they were shooting at the car, like 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 a hundred bullets or whatever. And yeah, the there's case, a lot of claims like that case, coming dude, from that family. Yeah, if that's the case, more people would be dead. Go, uh, cars do not stop bullets. Right. <laughs> they, Unless they you're do not Suge stop Knight. Bullets. Suge Knight, Suge Knight can dodge bullets like a motherfucker, dude. But they don't. At the <laughs> time I got shot at. Uh, in, in Philly, but it was because uh, I was trying to buy some weed in the back streets. It was uh, like Kensington, Philly, and they shot at the car, and the uh, one of the bullets went right through the frame, right through the steel, put a hole in it. You know, so bullet uh, cars do not stop bullets. Although a hundred bullets going into the car is going to kill more, uh, someone with with a car packed full of eight people. <laughs> right, unless you should die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's crazy. Man, I don't know what that, that the whole 
scenario with them having the the additional people that they shouldn't have had with them. In right. The no, they sh- definitely shouldn't have. That, again, it was bad tactical planning. And I do think that him running away from the vehicle was an attempt to make sure that the incident that I believe he knew was coming happened away from them. Kind of got away from Yeah, that's what I was thinking, too. That's what it looked like to me. So I don't know. I'm not in the guy's head, but he ran away from the vehicle. Let's go back (laughs) to the original cause for all of this. I mean, I thought when I first saw it from day one that this whole thing was kind of selfish and that the Bundys were kind of just taking advantage of other people just to get their own point across and just to get, like, because they have a personal grudge. That's the way I, I got know, it. Did you watch any of the videos of them? They kept it's, saying, hey, this is about, you know, making our voices heard. Of course this that's what they're going to say, dude. Depression. I mean, yeah. yeah, anybody can come up with a nice speech and, and a fancy-sounding speech. If you're going to try to get people to support you, that's what you're going to do. Dude, if you're going to start a revolution, you do it because we have psychopathic oligarch bankers, and they all need to fucking have their heads chopped off. That's the type of revolution I'm talking about. We need to fucking bring the to Washington. <laughs> no, no, we need to wa- we need to line up all these politicians. Governor, man. We, no, no, he's talking we about just, you know those most of those militia men. <laughs> no, I'm just are kidding. Dude. Conservatives. We, we these politicians and these that. bankers need to be a fucking lined up in front of a firing squad. Okay, forget mm. a little bit of land that was stolen. <laughs> we need like a real legit revolution, not like some uh, some like, take up a non-used federal building and and play like an unoccupied pretend. federal building. Like <laughs> we took over a federal building that was not occupied, and people left for the winter. <laughs> That's I see how why they did that though, just so like you know, it, it's so they can come off like non-violent, non-threatening. All right. What does our guest think about that? What do you think about that, Justin? About them taking the the building. The unoccupied uh, building. It, it, it's a symbolic gesture, occupying any building of the government. I mean, when it's done right, it, it, it can it can mean a lot. Oh, um, absolutely. You know, it, it, in Ireland, they took over a post office. Yes. And that, that's what started the Civil War. <laughs> yeah. Was this done um, right, then? Yes. Yeah. You, you so said it, it, it's it, done right. Was it stop done right? Stop comparing the Stop comparing my Irish to these Bundys, man. No, I'm just kidding. Well, I'm just, I'm, I, it's, it's a good example. <laughs> no, I don't. I, 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 I was just joking. <laughs> that is a good and, example. And, but you're right, though. You're right. You're definitely right, though. It's definitely, and it, yeah. And, and it's the exact opposite because, right. I mean, it played out the same way. A bunch of people got killed. Leaders got executed in the story. But it wasn't because they did have people with them that understood that this was a bad idea. And and they followed it up with a guerrilla campaign, you know, rather than everybody, to quote the guy that, you know, organized the guerrilla campaign, rather than marching in step towards slaughter, we're not going to play by their rules anymore. And, right. and that's with freedom, you know. <laughs> so, but I don't, I, I see this particular branch of of the militia movement living in an echo chamber. That they, they think that everybody thinks the way they do, and that everybody's behind them. It's not. <laughs> it's not quite that. You know, we're not at that point. You know, they say that three, that they're the three percent, but there's not three percent of them. You know, we, we don't have three percent of the population ready to bear arms. So I mean. I, I, I think, think we do. Long I think we do. It's just not. It's not like three percent for the right reasons. You know, it's there's people willing but, to do that, bear arms, but it's just like not for the right reason. Well, it's probably like, you, maybe if you added everybody up that was ready to bear arms, three mm-hmm. percent for different causes, but they're all you know everybody's divided. You know, I mean, from my standpoint, oh, yeah, if you support exactly. Ferguson, you should support these guys in Oregon for the same reason. But that's that's not the way the general populace sees it. Yeah, Justin, you you bring up Ferguson. I think that's a great thing that you point uh, point out because it is it is similar in, in in one very important way. And I brought this up many times ever since Ferguson is because this whole Black Lives Matter, you know, hands up, don't shoot. It's all based. The cornerstone of that movement was based off of this Chris Brown guy from Ferguson, 
And this guy, this Chris Brown dude, he Mike. was a criminal. You can't you you can't argue that he was a criminal. He he just got done robbing the store. You could see him intimidating the store owner. He charged at him, stole some cigars, and so so. I thought that was a propaganda video. I thought that. It, it, uh, you're telling really me him, it's CGI? Isn't that a, was that if, if was that actually not, him though? Was it actually him? That's the thing. If it's actually him, then how? I don't. That I from what I've seen, I don't think that was actually him. It was a totally different person. If that's not him. Then that's then I, then I take it back and I was wrong all along. But as far as I know, the cops the the claim was he just got done robbing a store from cigar for cigars and that was I don't know. But from what Mike Rivero showed showed us, it, it it was totally a different person. There was one video where this dude was claimed to be Chris Brown run run around uh, like starting fights and like beating the shit out of some old black dude, and I know okay. that wasn't him. That was propaganda. But yeah, the, that was fake. That right. was definitely fake. But, right. But the Damn, footage from so the store. That goes on. But the footage from Chris the store Brown. was real, as far as Chris I know. It was, but it was Chris it was it the same guy? That's yeah. That's Chris. what I'm saying. I'm saying I believe. Justin, it what do you think? I don't. Ju- shut up, Jeff. <laughs> Justin, what do you think? <laughs> okay. First, Chris Brown is the guy, the Hollywood guy that beat up his girlfriend. Yeah. Mike Brown. Oh yeah. The guy that got <laughs> Thank <first>. you. <laughs> We are okay. messed up. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> okay. I mean, I knew what you but, were saying, Jeff, but he caught that before I did, and that's pretty funny. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. Other than anyway, that, go Mike, ahead. Mike Brown, Mike Brown, and Chris Brown, neither one of them were angels. Okay. Yeah, of course. Um, just like these guys, you know, none of them are angels. At the same time, they don't deserve to die in the street or the snow. Exactly. So, that's. You know there is that element, and both both fights are are when you boil it down, come to people standing up against an overreach of the government. Exactly. So yep. There yep. is that, and that's what people need to to focus on. That's what people need to get behind. Thank you. Um, I, mean, I perp like I have some real issues with what they did with the uh, the Native American artifacts out there in Oregon. I yep. have problems with that. <laughs> Me too. That, see, that was what I was trying to say. Yeah, it, that's my thing too. So, what's this about artifacts? Can you go a little deeper on <sighs> that? Jesus Christ! Will you explain it to him, just <laughs> <laughs> What is this? Well, yeah. you have a bunch of conflicting, just like everything else. You have a bunch of conflicting stories. The nearest anybody can tell, they either ransacked or they maybe destroyed um, some Native American artifacts on thing. Um, some of it, it was certainly played up. We don't know the extent of what they actually did because once the FBI got a hold of it, they realized that was a way to turn people against them, and, and they turned it into this huge thing. I don't think they did as much as the FBI is leading people to believe, but I do think they did something. Um, the FBI is claiming that the Bundys destroyed some artifacts? Yeah, that were on scene in Oregon. Um and then you know, and then you have the other issues with, you know, some of the people that they had there with them were not nice people. Um, I mean, frankly, the Santilli guy. I mean, I don't. It should have been him, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. I totally I agree, dude. Dude, that's the first that's, thing I that's, said. That's, was, that's a whole other subject too. <laughs> it should have been Santilli that got killed. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, that, he's an asshole. Because. You know, I, I wouldn't really, you know, I wouldn't lose any sleep over that. But, uh, I mean, that guy, when, you, when you're trying to build a unifying movement, you, you probably shouldn't associate yourself with somebody who's threatened mosques, and it's just a general scumbag. Um, you know, his, his, little, his little organization had a stage something, a nationwide thing where they were going to go after mosques. And they actually targeted a very, very liberal mosque near me. I mean, like, <laughs> like if, if you're going to take one and, and pick on one, you, you want to find a crazy fundamentalist one, you know? God damn you right, yeah. Right, right. <laughs> right. Okay, this, is, this, this mosque is a mosque where the, the women speak to men, you know? <laughs> it's, it's, not a, it's not a psychotic mosque. Right. And we actually had to go out there to, to stand against these clowns well, I mean, we didn't have to, but we did. Um, and of course, you know, the second they, the second they had any actual opposition, they left. 
mean, they, they never even got out of the damn cars. And welcome back to episode eight of Lost and Transmission. I am your host, Chris Perkins, joined by my co-hosts, Michael Wagner and Jeff Giles, and our guest, Justin King. Jeff, do you have your sound fixed? Is it fixed? It? it sounds better, you bastard. Okay, good. Good. <laughs> it does sound... I can still hear something, but it's way better than it was, and I will deal good. with that for the rest of the night, if that it's means... a brand new mic, so... Well, okay. Well, perfect. So first time used. <laughs> anyway, so back on the subject. Um, I have to skip out for like three minutes, as I said. So I'm gonna let you and Michael hold it down for the next three minutes, and I'll be back. But uh, do your thing, guys. I trust you. All right. So that song he just played is my favorite song of all time. And I play yes, and that song <laughs> Trevor Moore is great, dude. Time for the teens. It's not like our governor Paula Page who is like, We need to give the drug dealers the guillotine, we need to kill them all. Like the main governor, my main governor I totally agree with him on a lot of things, but I'm way off with this shit dude. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's we don't need to that kill a bunch of team. we don't need to kill I mean like I am not down with drug dealers, but I don't think the problem I don't think we need to kill them all, you know. I mean like all right, anyway. So just I'll the do Clintons that. in the bushes. <laughs> just the Clintons in the bushes, that's it. If you want to talk about like drug dealers, we'll get into like the Clintons in the bushes and like That's yeah, what I mean, yeah. yeah. We can yeah, we can really get into some drug dealing if you want to get into yeah. that. But uh, I'll be back in three minutes. Uh hold it down guys. I shall return. Yep. yep. Yeah, so we were debating off break who's uh who's better, Bill Murray or Trevor Moore. And of course, I don't know. With him gone, I think we need to talk about Flat Earth or something. Flat Earth! Something. Completely Flat destroy Earth. his show. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the Flat Earth stuff is fun sometimes. Man. I should have, no, I should have, like, I should have, like, pretended to be a caller again. That was fun. That yeah, was horrible, man. Oh, I, yeah. I, I, I remember that. You almost gave me an aneurysm. You did. <laughs> I almost had a heart attack. I'm sitting here like, oh, no, I'm not yeah. one of these guys. Yeah, oh. you were the guest. I remember. It, it, it was horrible, <laughs> dude. That cracks me. Did you see the uh, the Neil deGrasse Tyson thing today? They put out. He completely went on Comedy Central, and uh, and it was crazy. And um, he he tore apart that rapper dude with the flat Earth guy. And at the end, he's like, and he has his mic, and he's standing there. And at the end, and he says, "By the way, this is gravity," and he drops the mic. <laughs> <laughs> it was wonderful. Dude. <laughs> yeah, I saw I saw a bunch of people, you know, mainly you know pundits from Fox News, you know, making fun of them. I'm like, you know what? You need to shut the hell up. This guy actually made science appealing to 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 people again, and we have a you know, I, I don't care what this guy does. Honestly, he's one of these guys. As far as I'm concerned, you know, he can do you know lines of blow and run over a hooker. I don't care, you know, <laughs> because what he's doing right now, as far as making you know people making science cool again for, you know, younger people, I, it, it needs to happen or we're going to have a nation of idiots. Yeah. So, I mean, Agreed. as far as I'm concerned, that guy's got diplomatic immunity. Yeah, I like the guy. We're talking about Neil deGrasse Tyson, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good, yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah, people are pretty fucking stupid, so we need people like that. You know, it needs to become, like you said, it needs to be kind of cool. Science needs to become cool again. So, so let's get back to this whole revolution thing because there's a lot of people listening right now. I can feel them just like wanting to hear about it and talk about uh, revolution. What what should start this? What should initiate this? The British aren't going to come this time and take our guns. And this whole Bundy thing, I can't compare that on any level with the the BLM uh, land grab. I don't compare that to the British taking our guns. So this isn't Lexington and Concord. It's not. Well, what about what, uh? What about the little thing in Flint, Michigan? The they, they've been abusing morning. the population for uh, for for since since day one. I mean, um, they can just say it's an accident. Um, the politicians can all pass the blame. I'm not so sure if that if that's on the same level as uh, as uh, that's that's the same level for a revolution. A little different. Like, it's a little different. I'm back. Yeah, yeah it's a little different. It, it's not. Yeah, it's not a cause for. It's not a cause for people sure. to like 
for the militias to start going. What's your thoughts on that, Justin? I just uh, want to hear Justin's it, thoughts. I don't even want to hear Jeff's thoughts. J- Justin, what do you hear me? All the time. <laughs> Shut up, dude. <laughs> Historically okay. speaking, you, there is never a planned revolution. Okay, everybody's ready. No. And everybody's never. waiting, and there's You're right. something stupid happens. I mean, it, and it normally is. It is something idiotic. It's a bunch of untrained soldiers in Boston opening fire on on a crowd of people throwing rocks at them. It's you know, mm-hmm. it, it's stuff like that that actually sparks it. It's never. There's never a plan, you know. When there is a plan, it's it's normally not good because then it's a coup, really. And mm, basically, you, you just you just change you just change all the guards. Yeah, <laughs> you have you, you, you get, get, some good you get a new group of scummy people in charge. Yeah. When you actually have a people's led revolution, it's something that happens based on nine times out of ten just something. Stupid, no, you're right, dude. You know. <laughs> You're right. I mean, so um, so this it's thing totally that happened right. in Oregon could have could actually be what sparks the revolution. Then, I mean, you're right. Yeah. With with the Boston massacre, that wasn't exactly a noble way to start it. A bunch of the, like assholes the throwing the Boston Tea Party. You mean with the Bo- Bo- no the Bo- you, miss, you met the, missing up with like a Valentine's Day massacre with the Boston Tea Party here. What I'm talking about the Boston massacre. I'm just kidding with you, dude. <laughs> I'm saying that. A bunch of people in the streets Come started on. throwing snow and ice and clubs at the British soldiers, and the British soldiers opened fire. So that's pretty much what started it. I mean, those people were scumbags who were harassing the British at the time. But on the same level, that's what it took. That's what it is. So, yeah. So this this might actually start out the uh, – what's that noise? I hear a noise, a crackling noise. I hear it, too. But yeah, no, it could. I mean, if if we had a bunch of cells go active in the U.S. tomorrow and start blowing up buildings, yeah, it could spark a revolution. But from Crying what I'm seeing, from, from what I'm seeing, the the people that are involved with this little circle <laughs> aren't aren't of that caliber. They're not. They don't even realize that that's how they should operate. Like as far as if they actually want to achieve their goal, and then. It, I don't think they have the stones for it either. So, I do hear that. It's like a, it's like a helicopter. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I was surprised to see this Flint militia join the forces of uh, Michael Moore. Like, what the hell? <laughs> do we have a left wing militia here? <laughs> well, you know, I mean. And see, to me, something like that stands a better chance of causing widespread civil disobedience and and, and spiraling than anything, because you've already got a bunch of people in the streets. You know, one of these mm-hmm. protests turns violent, and then and then maybe you can see something. The problem is that it's Flint. You know, if it was, it needs to be a bigger city. But and again, I'm not advocating people. You know, do any of this? I'm just saying, putting this in historical context. Be real clear. Yeah. About that. <laughs> a bigger city, yeah. Uh, but I mean, Flint, man, Flint has like made murder capital a couple of years, and it's just such a, in a poor shape. And that's a wild town. You know, at night they actually declared a war zone. What? It's just that that dangerous. Oh God, got another. You know, I've got this guy, and he's probably listening right now because he's like my my internet stalker in this creepy way. His name is Matt Barson. Um, yeah, and he uh, just sends me randomly throughout the day. The guy's, you know, he doesn't sleep either. Um, it just random stuff that you know, a Muslim person did this, a Muslim person did that all day long. It's creepy. Anyway. Just got a message from him. I thought I'd share that. With He's you probably all. from Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I don't know where he's from. He's he's something. Hey, that I, sounds but, similar to Jeff, though. Jeff, some guy. I can't. I haven't saw a day him without posting something about Islam. 
is not, not every day, dude. Not every day. <laughs> it's, it, every... it's only like it was like eighty percent of my posts. Now it's like twenty. Ninety percent. No, it was it was bad, but now it's like one out of ten posts. Every day. I got it out of my system. Bastard, I made a dude. video on What's it. What's your issue with Islam, dude? Why do you have to be such a dick? Because it's being used to fucking cause havoc and hell you know on the, the planet. Sunny and Shia and the whole. Do you know that? Or are you just like spouting off because you're a racist bastard? I just want to know. It has man. nothing to do with to... racism. I'm talking about the caliphates that have been exi- in existence. This is the new Islam caliphate. The, the ones in the 16th century killed over 200 million people on the planet, dude. It was a real evil. Look, Islam might be cool if our government didn't go to the Middle East. They were becoming cool. Islam wasn't a threat at one point. It, it, was, it was like, you know, kind so of... They became a threat when you just made them a threat. Is that what you're no, saying? No, it became Are a threat when our bomb? government went over there and killed 5 million people. When our government goes over there and bombs 7 countries killing 5 million people... Resulting in 17 million pissed off family members who want to who want to point the finger at someone. Well, they want to totally, blame someone for the death I, I of would the family know, members. Yeah, but uh, no, no, no. <sighs> okay, let I me. Still, I still, All right. Yeah, can, just, Justin, you're not going to, dude, because it's awful. You can't no, defend something. Yeah, shut up. No, 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 no. No, okay. hear me yeah, out. Because I, I, I can, I hear can him turn up. this, <laughs> and I can make it. I, you can make your point. And yeah. not sound like a bigot. All right, <laughs> here it is. There are a hundred schools, a hundred schools of thought of Islam. Compare schools of thought to denominations of Christianity. Okay. Of those hundred schools of thought, there are two, two that are dangerous. And the, and if you ask any Muslim about these schools of thought, they're going to talk about these guys. The way people talk about, you know, the crazy snake handlers in Christianity. They're like, oh, those people are crazy, you know. And these are the Wahhabi and the Salafi. These two schools of thought, if you name a terrorist organization, a transnational terrorist organization, that, that's Islamic in nature, I promise you the adherents are from those two schools of thought. It's not Islam. It's these two crazy sects. The problem is one of these sects is uh, linked to this, this little country called Saudi Arabia. It has a ton okay. of cash. So if, if you refine your argument from Islam is evil to Wahhabi, Wahhabism and Salafism, exactly. are, you will have Muslims. Chris, shut up. You don't know the fucking He's about. right. He's right. <laughs> no. He's, You're disagreeing with him. Okay, Justin, I respect that you, you, you're looking into this and everything, but it's more than just Saudi Arabia. You have over – you have hundreds – I shouldn't even say over – hundreds of, of, uh, of imams and, and, and clerics that are preaching to their millions of followers that all non-Muslims should be raped, enslaved, and killed. And look, it's not just one sect. It's many sects. And look, all I want to see, I want to see all of Islam condemning these imams – and and tell and calling them out for their violence. I want to see reform. I don't care. I'm not concerned about Muslims. I'm 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 worried about their religion. I'm worried that in some areas of the Islam world, 90% of the women have their clitoris cut out so that they can't feel pleasure when they have sex, so that their husbands will feel a little less insecure biggest, and they won't. That's your biggest thing, huh? That's your biggest. It's my biggest thing is slavery of women. It's the clitoris. This clitoris is the biggest thing. Just it's clitoris is very, the clitoris issue, is right very right important, Chris. It's very important that their entire yeah, private is part apparently is seems very important. Surgically cut off. <laughs> Look, man, okay. another thing, honor killings. The, the, the fact that you can be killed and that your government will protect you for leaving Islam. The fact that 20% of marriages over there are to nine-year-old girls. The fact that those nine-year-old oh, girls in... <clears throat> Fucking Pakistan, dude. Uh, it's, dude, it's, what the fuck? What, what the fuck what, dude? That's what happens over there. 20% of the marriages are to nine-year-old girls. The families give their nine-year-old girls to these to these guys with the whole dowry thing. They do all of that over there. And sometimes they get they, they get them younger. And you have imams calling for for them to be allowed to get married even younger, trying to protect that. It's insanity, okay. dude. You can't protect that. Well, hang on, 
Hang on, hear me. Can listen, you listen, listen, listen here. <laughs> yeah, listen here. Yeah, live talk. I'll shut up. As far as imams and as far as people condemning this crazy craziness, fifteen thousand signed on to a fatwa that condemned terrorism. Blanket statement. All of the imams you're talking about are funded by Saudi mosques. And they're all Wahhabi. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, you look into this, <laughs> and you're going to find out at the end of the day, it's two crazy groups. The problem is that one of these crazy groups has a whole bunch of money. Thank you. Um, if, if you know the best, if you want to end, if you want to end Islamic terrorism, stop funding Saudi Arabia. Get the U.S. to cut ties with that country. Never going to happen, but you are right. I agree. Yeah, you will watch it dwindle overnight. That'd be wonderful. Yeah. And I, I, but I also, I, I am concerned about the whole pedophilia thing. It's not just in Saudi Arabia, and it's rampant. And it, well, it's child, abuse well, of boys, then you can so. talk about like our country. I mean, come on. Yeah, you, mean, but like, you want to bring up it, pedophilia? Tons of pedophilia. No, you, you, tons there's no of comparison going on over here. We're number one. No, 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 no. Give me a minute here. This is important. You can't compare Catholicism. First off, the priests. In, in Catholicism, they were condemned for it. They made a movie about this recently. The Boston Globe uh, exposed pedophilia as far as the Catholic priest goes. The, the society, we, we condemned it. Over there, it's protected. And it, it, it's protected and sanctioned by not only the public, but the government. This is a big difference. Well, see, you, you say that. Yeah, what's your take on that, Justin? But you say that, and it's true in certain communities. And those communities are Wahhabi ran because in a lot of these places, exactly. the local government is, is 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 the government. But in a lot of places you're talking about, the actual laws on the books are, are very different. Um, I, and as far as the the child marriage thing, yeah, it needs to be stamped out. Absolutely. And in <laughs> most places in the Middle East. It, it's actually if you if you pull up a thing on child marriage prevalence, it's not in the Middle East. It, it's in Africa. That's that's Pakistan where your highest the Middle incidents East. are. Yeah. All right, I'm, I'm going to read off here the uh, the Washington Post article here. Bill banning child marriage fails in Pakistan. This is Pakistan we're talking about, and that's where I'm okay. getting these statistics. Pakistan's right? in Asia, not the Middle East. Well, there you have it. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it, how are you going? How are you going to argue this? That this is isn't wrong. This is uh, this is protected, and the government well, considers any threat. The idea when 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 they tried to stop this whole pedophilia thing over there, they came out the, and said the laws of Sharia protect it, and they say it's <clears> un-Islamic <throat> and blasphemous to suggest that a nine-year-old girls should be protected and all that crap. And we we agree, that, Jeff. It's wrong. It's really wrong. We, uh, I, we're not you know, I still saying it's right. Yeah, exactly. European ignorance and American ignorance is still more dangerous than Islam. No, 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 no. You're being an apologist for Western, uh, for European. And what's his name? Uh, mm-hmm. Stefania. What's his name? Stephen uh, Molyneux, whatever the hell his name is. What? Stephen Molyneux? What were you bringing him yeah, up did conversation. Did, Shut up. Because he did a great presentation, a video <laughs> presentation, and he made the point that this this whole apologist thing for European uh, cruelty and trying to uh, to marginalize the violence done by Islam is ridiculous because Islam is the most crazy, ridiculously genocidal uh, empire that's ever been on this planet before. Craziest by far, dude. If you, Sunni, if you, or, Sunni or Shia? Well, that's that's only because you know we're we're looking at it as you know ours don't count because we're a secular government. But I would right. like to point out one thing. I would like to point out one thing. The the, the Pakistani government and and the people that made this claim. Guess what sect they belong to? The Wahhabi. The Wahhabi. Most of the Shia Muslims are in uh, Yemen. There's a spot there in Yemen, Syria. And Iran, mostly Iran, but like everywhere else, like uh, Justin said, Wahhabi, Sunni funded exactly. operation. Exactly, and that's why I keep telling Jeff that you have to understand that, dude. You, you can't just like. I have to understand what. 
I what think we there's just a, said. You know, Jeff, Jeff's right, and Jeff was just talking about it. Muslims are most oppressive towards Muslims. You know, it's not right. like they're oppressive. I'm not disagreeing with that, dude. I'm absolutely And uh, uh, that's why I think the next war is between Iran and Saudi yeah. Arabia. Those two countries, I would, you know, I would actually oh, prefer course. Iran yeah, to be course. the Middle East superpower. No. Dude, it, not, it doesn't take a genius to know that there will be anything between Saudi Arabia and Iran. That's kind of pretty obvious. Am I wrong? Israel's probably going to get involved, too. Well, Israel's going to get involved with fucking anything, dude. Anything that will... Okay, to steer I was just of... seeing an article recently how... Uh, Netanyahu was like, yeah, Saudi Arabia, they're, they're a good ally of ours. Yes, actually, I had, that, I had that up here, and I uh, closed my whole browser out. But, uh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Okay, that, pretty- I, I find it that it's great that 15,000 Muslims are condemning terrorism, and I see that on Facebook conde- that they are condemning About? ISIS, you know, Muslims against ISIS. And I went to the ISIS, that, that Facebook page, Muslims against ISIS, and I asked the administrator, you know, what, are you guys condemning the imams, you know, the ones that you're claiming are Wahhabi? Are you condemning them? Are you condemning Sharia law? Are you condemning pedophilia? And they, they blocked me. They, they wouldn't answer. They they. Did. Because well, you yeah, banned their right. page. I would have blocked you. Yeah, because you're probably... Because <laughs> they, they said you have proof. You're like, they said, yeah, of course do, they're going to do that. They said, do you have yeah. proof that imams are saying this? And I went ahead and I posted like 50 videos of uh, different okay. imams. Yeah. Videos whatever. of what? All right, all right. I get your point. That's good that they are condemning <laughs> violence. I want to see Muslims condemn pedophilia, Sharia law. Well, of course you I do. Wanna, yeah. We all okay, do. Wait, wait. Everyone that does. Term. Did you see We're the not Jeff, talking I about that. that video. I am. That, well, remember that, that video of those moderate Muslims? They were breaking up those extremist protests, you know, those ones who were calling for Sharia law. And these other Muslims are like, go back to Syria. Right. It that way. Justin, what did you just say? Okay, when it comes to Sharia law, that is a very, very misunderstood and scary term. Okay? Thank you. All right, because Sharia is the doctrine. Okay, that's that's the law of, of the doctrine that, that of each sect. So let's say... Uh, let's say Kurdish Shia Sharia law. You would live under it and not care. Okay? <laughs> it's not a big deal. In Palestine, the best example, okay, is Palestine. In the West Bank, homosexuality, legal, completely legal, has been since before blacks had the right to vote in this country. So Sharia, right. when people say, when you see those polls and Pew, which is a bunch of guys that don't understand Islam, ask questions like, do you support Sharia law? They ask some Kurdish guy that, that supports his version, and he says yes. Yes, exactly. And America thinks that his guy <laughs> supports, you know, beheadings <laughs> and all of this stuff, and he doesn't. And that's how this and all that's, that's a, It's a very dangerous... It's one of these things where Islam is so fractured in schools of thought that when people try to try to uh, lump it together, it gets crazy. Because so, so, Justin, you're saying that there are more liberal versions of Sharia law, and I'm saying that I don't care. I don't want government and religion mixing. Government and religion do not do not belong together. They do not belong together. I don't care how liberal or you know positive oh, I know. or I, pro homosexual. I agree with that. Most, but. But Jeff, we, we agree with that. that but that's not what we're talking about here, Jeff. Go ahead, Mike. I completely agree. My, oh. my, my, my oh. point here mm-hmm. is that when people say Sharia and you see these polls where, you know, 87% of Muslims support Sharia law, well, no shit. But to them, the people that answered, <laughs> Sharia may not mean, you know, <laughs> beheadings and cutting people's hands off. And yes. like that. In most schools of thought, it doesn't. Well, of course, yeah. It just so in the more it, extreme in, in the more extreme areas. I'm concerned right. that people are being more acceptable and tolerant, and they are okay when it's suggested that we have Sharia law here or another place. I'm more concerned about the people in Europe that are that are being uh, raped and killed at this point, and the idea that you know even most of, most of Islam is peaceful, sure, but it's the more it's the psychotic few, the minority, the 3%, if you want to say, of, of Muslims 
that that will ruin it, and they will eventually hold most of the power. They're the ones that are the biggest psychopaths. They're the ones that gain the power, and they're the ones that end up having the power in the end. And no one wants to stand up to them, because uh, people in, in, in Islam, if you stand up to them, you're going to be targeted, and you're probably going to be killed. Well, and that's, that's it depends on the area. But one of the things that we that, that I think the, one of the biggest overlooked pieces of this the issue when it comes to Europe, all right, is because right now everybody's slamming the Syrian refugees, okay? Because for the longest time everybody was refugees, 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 and it was refugees. However, these mass attacks that took place, which were, from what I can tell, severely inflated, but enough of them happened to worry about, they weren't Syrian. They were from Africa, and they were mainly from Nigeria, which was where the Saudi mosques were, which are also Wahhabi. But they came up, and they came across the Med through North Africa. And, those oh, were the, okay. and these are the people that are causing the problems. Like the ones in France, when France invaded Mali during the yep. northern Mali conflict. That's what a lot of those refugees came from, was from Mali. Right. Like everyone thinks these Correct. refugees are coming from... Uh, Syria, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> it, you you can't laugh at all, though, because it is a serious issue. Laugh that we at need all. To talk about. It's a serious issue, but you. Uh, uh, relax, buddy. Um, so <laughs> you look. You you saw the stupid video I made. Look. All right, listen. Okay. My point. Stop it. Okay, Chris. Stop it. Relax. <laughs> right. The point of this was, I'm not, I'm not against the Syrian. I'm not against the Syrian refugees. My my point was our government is going to use them to create the next false flag and uh, and, and initiate mar- uh, martial law just like France did. That was my concern. That's why I said they can't come to this country because our government's going to use them to their advantage. That's it. It's fucked up that we hurt Syria, that we bombed their country to shit. But there are 200 other countries on the planet that they could go to. They don't need to come to our country. We can help them without having them come into our country. That was my point. It's and they are being abused. It's really messed up if you see some of these videos in Syria. I feel sorry for them, completely feel sorry for them. But that still doesn't mean they have to come here. We can help them from over here. With the, with the ocean in between us, we can keep it that way. You know. Well, look at Saudi Arabia and the Gulf states keeping them out. Like, where else are they right. going to go? What, right. Yeah, what are you going to do with that? Well, dude, like like Justin said, we have to stop President, funding Saudi Arabia. Uh, Jeff Giles, what are you going to do with that? What are we going to do? We're going to pull out all our troops out of all those countries, shut down all the bases, tell Israel, you know, have fun. You know, you better start treating your neighbors nicer if you want to survive. Good luck. And uh, and be gone. Peace out. Just like, you know, Ron Paul. And oh, just said. like that, right? Just like... Just like that. <laughs> just, like, just, like, just like that. <laughs> We're out of there overnight. We're out of there overnight. Done. All done. Yep. You Absolutely. Are the next fucking president. Goodbye to the petrodollar. Goodbye to the minerals. Goodbye to the oil, the opium, all the resources. Screw it. Our do- the dollar will no Hello, longer be the Ron currency. Paul. The dollar will no longer be the currency of the world. Screw it. Oh well. That that's how it should be. There's You're no reason why we now? should be the dominant currency. There's no reason why we have to keep presence in the Middle East just so we can be the dominant force of the No, I, I need... actually, I kind of agree with that. That's you yeah, kind of agree that we should pull out, made, but uh, the uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm not totally down with pulling out every time. But you really don't think we should pull out of the Middle East all of our people? No, of course I do. I'm just close down all the bases. That's what I would do right now. Yeah, I don't think anybody's going to disagree with that. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't see anyone disagreeing unless you're like Donald no. Trump. But, I mean, the central banks will disagree, yeah. <laughs> well, but that's yeah. retarded, man. Of course they're going to disagree with that, yeah. dude. That's well, they're the ones that run everything. Obvious. They're the ones that are running everything and controlling your politicians. Really? Yeah, that's just my point. So that's what so I'm Justin, you're telling us all. Justin, so. Justin, what do you, th- <laughs> what do you think about these uh, elections, you know, like – like I think so, everyone's so consumed by the most irrelevant election out there, and it's you know no one's paying attention to their state or local election. Oh, you're talking about you know the, the presidential thing? <laughs> He's like, yeah, the what? most irrelevant <laughs> election. Right well, now. that's how it is every election. <laughs> like I, I don't, I, I honestly, as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't. It, none of these people. 
deserve to be in that office. Um, like I can't support any of them. I'm just I Nobody, will say I'm though. diametrically even opposed. Yeah, I'm diametrically opposed to to uh, to, to Trump. Well, you know, I would hope so. Other than that, I think everybody else is really scummy. <laughs> He's just scummier than the rest. Uh, you know, I, I don't I, know, I man. Bernie, Bernie seems Bernie seems kind of more scummier than exactly. Trump. If you have to Me. choose between Trump and Sanders, you would go with Sanders. Yeah. I, wow. What? What kind yeah. of? You sound like you sound like <laughs> a, a, a Republican, um, Jeff and. Justin, shame on you for saying Sanders. How could you choose between both of them? <laughs> Ooh. He just got shamed by Michael. And I'm not a, both I, of them are here. equally evil. Look, if I, I had no, to pick... No. I, See, here's, here's the thing. I, the I, don't, evils, I don't want... If I would pick between I, all the evils, I would pick Rand over all of them. Rand Paul, yep, yeah. I'm there too. Absolutely. Because Absolutely. I don't think he's evil. I think he's playing because he thinks he's being all smart. Well, whatever he's doing, I would still take his side because I know, you know, I just, that's me. I'm totally against the elections. I don't fucking agree on all that shit, dude. And I know that we don't vote people in. I know that they get elected because they get elected, uh, selected, not elected. We know that. So, but that's why we know Rand Paul will never have a chance. But, I mean, think about it. If Rand Paul was president, I'm pretty sure that it would be a little bit better. I mean, I, I don't like to pick the that evils, would slow the new world but it would be down. like it, it would be a little bit. It would be better if you. Right. Of course, if you have Bernie as president, we're fucked. That's going to destroy right. the whole Chris, country. If we have Trump as I president, saw, he's going. You saw and, what look, I showed you in private. You saw who I told you endorsed and what he said about Trump. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, and, and so you know the person I'm talking about. Let's just put it this way, Justin. Someone, um, someone who everyone in the liberty movement knows and recognizes and respects, sure. said name. privately, privately to someone very close to me in private Big during name. a lunch, a very True big story interview. here. True story everybody here. Everybody knows. Everybody knows. He said that Trump is is in it only for his ego, and he's going to intentionally lose to Hillary. And he Hillary. also said that. Proper right up. He, yeah, yep. he he's definitely high up there to know this sort of shit. That I'm that much is. I clear. do agree with that. If, I I, if I, I finally agree with Jeff tonight, and I know this because because yeah because I told him I who this is. And, and <laughs> obvious, obviously, because uh, you know it was all off the record and uh, exactly. And, uh, but 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 he also I, said I, that I he, that he thinks Rand is the real deal, and that's who he's supporting, and that he's wow. legit. That he that he's actually a hundred percent libertarian, pretending to be Republican. Yeah, well, I, I don't, I don't buy that about Rand. I mean, I think it's you're tough. right as far as the, the, the people that are there. He's definitely the the least offensive, but he's still. I mean, do you want a little bit of cancer? I mean, that's it's the way I look at it. <laughs> I um, see your, yeah. that, that, no, no, that's my yeah. I agree yeah. with that point too. Yeah, I yeah. but as far as as far as Trump is concerned, like in fact, I wrote an article about you know what people think he stands for. Versus that was good article. Actually, that was an actual article. In his article, book. <laughs> you know, because he wrote this book, which apparently none of his supporters have read. <laughs> of course they have. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, that kind of goes without saying. But yeah, I mean, this guy, and, and a lot of this I don't disagree with. Some of it I do. But the fact of the matter is he's, you know, pro-eminent domain, pro-gun control, pro, pro, uh, pro-choice. Um what were some of the other ones that just surprised the hell out of me? Uh, the... Single payer healthcare system. Oh yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> like, a good one. He, he, uh, yeah, Obamacare's <laughs> bad because it doesn't go far enough. <laughs> you know, I mean, this guy he he's he's not a conservative in any way, shape, or form. Oh, there's no there's no, um, there's no doubt about that. That's obvious. And it just it 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 blows my mind. That this guy actually wrote all this down, and none of his supporters apparently read this. Because I can tell you right now, most of these hillbillies that have, you know, yay Trump stickers on their sign on their, on their trucks, <laughs> none of them have any clue that this guy wants to ban assault rifles. <laughs> and this is they will know. They'll, 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 they will know. Oh, what yeah, the fuck is an assault down. rifle? Assault rifle, semi-automatic. What's an semi-automatic? A semi-automatic. Isn't that considered every gun out there, even a handgun? 
Technically? Uh, uh, technically, no. not, no. <laughs> uh, like revolvers automatic weapons are banned. Automatic. We got the semi... Oh. <laughs> Jeff, have you ever shot a gun? Of course. Well, have you really, though? I mean, like, seriously? Yeah, I'm not that great. I suck at it. Okay, so <laughs> you have no fucking clue. So, anyway, moving on. Where were we? I'm just kidding, Jeff, dude. I'm just fucking with you. I, think you were I, I was <laughs> trying to <laughs> solve it. I obviously I need some serious training. Uh, well, dude, that, that's why I, you know, that was my intention of making a gun control documentary. I figured I will do my you never showed a gun, part. but you're making a gun control documentary? Is that, that what you're awesome? telling me? Isn't that some really awesome No, that's not right awesome, there? dude. You, yes, it what? is. <laughs> that's fucking awesome. <laughs> All right, whatever, dude. It is awesome. Come on. Where did this guy come from? <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I'm going to send you a message right now so you can see who I'm talking about. But you can't say anything. Oh, what? What is this shit, dude? Okay, we're going to break. Because we got to take a break. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> no, we're going to get on the uh, the whole subject of uh, the Iran, the boat. And I ran. Oh, that one. Okay. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. We want to get on that actually because uh, I want to hear what Justin has to say about that because his opinion matters to me right now. So, go ahead, Justin. Okay. Well, the biggest thing that came out of this, and we wrote an article you can find on the fifth column news dot com um, about this is Iran's new technology. And it's not actually new. We just they demonstrated it before. We just didn't know they had it. We we didn't believe them when they told us that they did it. They have an effective GPS jam, which doesn't sound like you know that much because you I mean you can buy them you know but, online whatever but, that, that, that are short range. However, but, but, but these guys, the Iranian guys, they have one that apparently has quite a range because they've been able to take down a drone with it and actually take control of the drone, which they did a few years ago. And they told us that they did it, but we didn't believe them because we're like, there's no way these backward people have this technology. Well, it turns hmm. out they did. Because they did. That's, why, that's why our boats got lost. For one boat to get confused and its GPS to go off, yeah, that's possible it could happen. For it to happen at right. two, two of them, very, right. very unlikely. Yeah. For it to happen at the same time that the radios go down is, is impossible. So it lends credibility to Iran's statement. Um, they have this technology, and that is terrifying to to mil- military analysts. Because, you know, when we think GPS, we think, you know, our, our Google GPS that gets us from point A to point B. This is the same GPS system that guides our missiles. So if those missiles don't know where they're going, they're just going to hit in random places. Our entire military is built around this thing. And everybody seems to be kind of playing it down or ignoring it because nobody wants to admit that Iran, of all countries, has knocked us back to 1990s technology. (laughs) We have to go and lay targets if we want to do airstrikes now. And, and that's that's a big deal, and nobody really wants to talk about it. But now, as far as the boat... No, because they don't want to talk about it, because yeah, cause we want to get that propaganda out there, so we don't want to break that. I mean, I'm not sticking up, and I do stick up for Iran in, in many ways, but uh, like you're saying, they're not going to uh, push that propaganda out there. Because... Go ahead. Sorry. I had to throw that out. No. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying, Justin. Yeah, yeah. And and it's it's very uh it's very interesting. I can promise you that once our politicians actually understand what happened and once they get their DOD briefings, all of a sudden there's gonna be a whole lot less talk about bombing Iran because it's gonna require ground troops. Exactly. So and that that's the thing that they're looking for right now. Yeah, well, they think they are. <laughs> they think they are. Okay, well, that's a whole different story, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they think that's what they want. But anyway, <laughs> so, and then we move on to the, the question that everybody is actually talking about, 
is how our troops were treated. Um, you can tell the troops that. weren't treated poorly. Okay, they really weren't. They were given tea. They were fed. They, you know, they didn't even change them into prisoner garb. You know, um, and then there is the one thing that everybody seemed to get irritated about. And what's funny is they're right and they're wrong. <laughs> I've seen all of these blogs and, and, and entries about how it, it was a public curiosity for, and by the way, if you don't understand the relevance of that, under international law, you can't publicly, you can't turn the prisoners into a public curiosity. Okay? You're not allowed to do that. If they're POWs, which these guys weren't, but the same rule generally applies. Um, so everybody's talking about this headscarf, that this gold, you know, the female wore. Exactly. Okay. Yep. So I got the you. Thing. This is the, the the kicker about this is the headscarf is what everybody's mad about. Well, under DOD regs, when she's off base, she has to wear one anyway. So that's that's not really that big of a deal. Like if, if you're in Saudi Arabia, if you're stationed in Saudi Arabia and you're a female and you leave base, you you have to wear a headscarf. Um, that's that's just part of the military. Absolutely, hundred okay. percent have to do that. Yep, go ahead. Yeah. So, and but everybody's really mad about this. Mm, whatever. I don't see that as that big of a deal, considering what could have happened. <laughs> like in relation to how well they were treated, other than that, I don't see it as an issue at all. But what the funny part about it is everybody's like, this made them a public curiosity. Look in this photo. No, actually, the headscarf didn't make them a public curiosity. Look at this the photo. Fact that, this, look, look at this, at this photo. photo. The photo <laughs> made them a public curiosity. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Right. Sorry. Sorry, I had to laugh. The, the, Go ahead. Yeah, the, the Iranians were wrong in, in, in the sense that they should not have released that. That is, that is improper. That is an Absolutely. improper way to treat a POW. These Obviously. guys weren't really POWs, but they should have been extended the same courtesy. Um, so that that's a, it, it's one of those things where people are so focused on on, <laughs> on something that will be inflammatory, like the idea of you know these these Iranians making a, an American woman wear a headscarf. Oh that's, my God! That's, ah. that's just wrong. It's so wrong. That they, ah. that they, that they, that they, but they actually miss. They miss the real Don't violation. Don't pay no attention to Saudi Arabia. What? The real what violation mean, is that the photo was taken to begin with. Is that a country? What? Saudi Arabia? What? Anyway, uh, go I, ahead. I, I, I get it. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Yeah, yeah, I got to kick. Yeah. Anyway, so go ahead. You know, the the actual <laughs> violation is that the photo was there. Uh, send that photo to yeah, me, it, actually. Can you send that photo to me? I haven't seen it. Not to sound uh, like an ass. Didn't you... Wait, who's saying that? Didn't you just send me a link with a photo in it? Which one? Uh, you sent no. me one from... No, dude, that was me. That was... Oh, probably... I can't do that. Well, send me uh, the photo. And, so de- and definitely don't it. say... Don't say what that photo was. <laughs> don't say what that photo was on the air. Oh, no. See, I was talking about the photo of the, 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 the prisoners. Okay. Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah, Jesus! Christ. You know, I heard that they were, um, <laughs> you know, taken care of, and the That's Iranian army too. handled it in a professional manner. Okay, they just yeah. released. They did. Go ahead, go they ahead. I, I hope everyone knows what you're talking about. But yeah, go ahead. <laughs> they, they did. They the Iranians uh, behaved pretty well. I mean, if I was captured by the Iranians, I would hope that I would be treated that well. Um, yeah. I mean, I can tell you right now that if two Iranian patrol boats cruised back, cruise, cruised by, you know, uh, a naval installation here in our waters, they wouldn't be sitting on the floor drinking tea. Right. Well, there's there's no fucking way they would, dude. Yeah, dude. So, yeah. as far as that goes, <laughs> they, they treated them pretty well. I think we can overlook the headscarf. Um, I hope so. Okay, all right. So Iran, 
Iran, I Iran. Thought, like, you know, I, they lifted the sanctions off Iran. I'm proud of them. Coincidence. Right when the oil prices are shitty, so it's not like they lifted much off of them. <laughs> right. Here, get you a $20 a barrel of oil. <laughs> yeah. Man, what are you paying out there for gas? Twenty a Here barrel. In Wyoming, what is it like twelve dollars a barrel now? <laughs> what are we paying here? I don't. I don't. I know. I filled up my. Shared? What was that meme that we shared the other day? That was like that the uh, oil was cheaper than the meme that I shared, dude. What was that? The oil is cheaper than the cost of the barrel. No, oil that's what I was thirty-three. Yeah, that was, that oil was at thirty. Was actually, the oil meme. went up significantly like, last day. Oil's at thirty three dollars right now, thirty three sixty eight. Last couple days ago. Is this like is this like Jeff's thing or is it you're, like you're getting jealous. you're choppy there, buddy. What's that? <laughs> Say it again. I... Yeah, you're real choppy. I'm g- I'm gonna want to reconnect. All right. Yeah, so oil was at twenty eight and it went over the last uh over the last week it shot up to thirty three. It doesn't look like it's done going up. It might be done going up. It hit a major resistance point in the last uh, a couple hours ago. It went up to almost thirty five bucks and that was a huge resistance. Thirty four seventy seven. But yeah, oil man. Canada's getting screwed. <laughs> the the can the Canadian dollar is one hundred percent dependent on the. Uh, the are we good rate. now? We're good now? Yeah. Yeah. It's so through. oil is really hurt. Sorry, guys, Canada's and really we're dealing, hurt. Well, I'm dealing with uh, mobile broadband here, so uh, it's like hit or miss. But uh, if you guys can hear me now, that's great. So uh, you can hear your Canadian dollar shit. <laughs> I'm just saying Canada's really struggling right now with <laughs> the price of oil. I don't care about Canada because I can't even fucking go into Canada. They won't even let me in. <laughs> Not talk about but yeah, Canada. Yeah, I, I think it, I'm looking at the weekly chart here, and 30. Oh, it I looks know. like it's going to go back down now. It looks like it's going to go back down. Well, I don't trust you on that because you've been like saying this all this time, dude, and you like fucked us over on like what are you Bitcoin. talking about? Ha! <laughs> <laughs> the fuck are you talking about, dog? <laughs> I just like fucking, dude. It's so fun. You get it's so at offended. a major resistance point right now. It's going to go down, I think. It's not done. Okay. Justin, what do you think about Bitcoin right now? About Bitcoin? Talking about world currency. Bitcoin. Cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. What do you think about it? Oh, really? Yeah. Um, well, I, I'm for any kind of uh, currency that, that isn't part of Federal. a central bank. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <That's right>. so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Me too. I mean that, that that that's that's pretty much my entire opinion on Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, I hope well, it keeps my opinion too. So. It, it's gonna. It's kind of hard to talk about it on change. the show because we're all like this. Even Jeff. I mean, it's like even Jeff is like that. It's kind of weird because like Jeff is like a status <laughs> ass motherfucker, dude. He's like a status ass dude. You wear it, dude. Come on, dude. Let's call him out right now, dude. You, you little, you little Islamic. Phobic motherfucker. Dude. <laughs> okay, James. <laughs> <laughs> I am not Islamophobic. First off, that's that's a, a bullshit term. That's a, that's total. It no, doesn't it's, even it's exist. Not because you are so yes. fucking like you. Ah. What I'm so what I want to see people You're not Islam- be enslaved phobic. by Islam. Just like, oh, Islam <laughs> killed two hundred million people in the last seven hundred years. Give me a fucking break. Oh shit. Two hundred million people. Security. 200 million people, and, and they're enslaving every everyone is, who is Islam, who is a Muslim, is a victim of the religion. I don't care if they're in a nice area where they're treated friendly, they're still victims. Religion sucks. All religion right, sucks, and I'm Islam is no James exception. Right now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fucking get James on the phone, dude. we oh, got to get this get liberal... Get we got to get the, the liberal versus liberal fucking conversation. You're a liberal. Right? Listen to you. We all, <laughs> you are total liberal, man. <laughs> total liberal. <laughs> liberal dude, I will you are. Talk. Listen to you, you, dude. Change your name to Chris Muhammad Perkins. Okay, they're <laughs> Kyle Ahmed Call Butler. Call me Ishmael. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, man. We do got to oh, agree, though. Kyle has a pretty extremist fucking view, dude. You called him Kyle 
Ahmed Butler, dude. That's. <laughs> 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 I want to be talked about. That's hilarious. Oh man, That's poor hilarious. fucking Kyle, dude. We're like talking about him on air, dude. He he, he doesn't know any better. You're a dick, dude. Know any better. <laughs> this is cool. Don't let's do right, that. Anyway, <laughs> still up. Let me get back on track. Yeah. Ahmed. <laughs> I kill you. Silence! I kill Where's you. My- with my socialist knowledge, yeah. <laughs> Dude. Anyway, so, back on track. Can we get back on track, guys? My bad. Totally my bad. I bl- I, I was thinking that, yeah, downfall for this. Where were we? That doesn't matter, man. The future the future. Where the hell are we going? <laughs> yeah. Brain wreck. So yeah. <laughs> what do you see though, Justin? What do you think the future is going to be like? That's what I want to do. What, yeah. Justin, what do you think the future of the uh, this whole uh, this world uh, is going to be like, yeah. man? Put the world in perspective and just tell us, you know, what's going on. The future of the world this is ridiculous. Yeah, that's kind of a uh, big question, but uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Justin. Tell us what the future, you, What do you think Tell the future, us the future. of the world is? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, hang Go on. I got, I, got, I, got, I got Miss Cleo on the other line. Um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the, uh, it's probably going to, you know, involve a lot of war and, like, some bad shit's going to happen. That's going to happen. That was not what we wanted to hear. Like, uh, human history is very cyclical, Okay. I mean, it, it, it's the same stuff over and over again. Eventually, the U.S. is going to collapse. And there'll be a new empire, and, you know, it'll raise up. And other than that, the people of the world, unless they pull their shit together, Orwell's right. You want to know the future of the world? Picture of boots stomping on the face of humanity forever. Thank you. Yeah, fuck you, that, dude. You guys Damn hear it. that? Some more slavery. You hear that? Oh. Boot stomping on, yeah, you hear that? That's it. That's it. That's all there is to it. And I'm going to be hiding in the basement. Yeah, and Jeff is <laughs> hiding in the basement. He's going to wait till everyone is dead, and he's going to fucking go out. He's going to loot all the dead people. He's going to, like, fucking... They're going to be Ooh. dead. But he's going what? to have a butcher knife in his hand, and he's still going to What do they call that? Up. What do they call that when you <laughs> loot the dead body? I, I, I used to play that World of Warcraft game, and whenever someone used to, like, steal Christ, someone I do that in loot, Assassin's Creed. What? what do they call that? It's, like, ganking or something? Ganking, ganking? Loot. ganking. I don't fucking know. I've never done it. What is your problem? <laughs> loot I have no idea. You do I that, no shit, dude. You really do that, dude. Oh, I didn't do that in the video game. Oh, 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 oh. If, now if you do that, game, you get like appointment on a fucking video game. Oh, oh let's if just If you like, do that, you get boycotted fucking... and shit. Boycott. You get blackballed. Okay. Gonna boy, we're gonna boy. Yeah. Okay. So you don't get to join any groups, dude. Jesus fucking Christ! I don't play. I don't. I don't computer game. I play PlayStation, so I don't get into the groups of the fucking little computer nerds like you. Multiplayer. Dude, but why are you trying to? What is your fucking issue, dude? Why are you so racist? <laughs> what? Jeff is an Islamophobe. Yeah, thank you, you fucking yeah. bastard, dude. What is your fucking problem, dude? Uh, what is my problem? <laughs> All of us, dude. We're just like we don't oh know how to stick. We, we we don't even know how to like answer that shit. We want to stick up for you, dude. But <laughs> yeah, you're laughing, dude. You think it's wicked funny, dude? But it's, I mean, it is, dude. I I totally agree. It's, it's totally comedy. But what the fuck, dude? We're not gonna be like, yeah, ha ha, chef. Yeah, you're right. Uh, derp derp derp. Uh, burp, burp. Okay. Well, no one's disagreeing with me, so I guess... I am, mm, I am just not drunk enough right now to appreciate <laughs> <laughs> It's that obvious, talking? huh? Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Oh. <laughs> but, uh... Oh, man. Justin's Just like, dude, why am I on this show? I know. Why? It's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> shit. <sighs> Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, yeah. I don't know what to say to any of this right now. So, <laughs> yeah, dude, this is what's, this is 
believe that Eric I don't know. Flat Earth Justin is. usually joins us on our drinking. Isn't that Let's right? Talk Justin? about flat Earth. See, what? This is no. why we have to talk about you, dude. Get off the show. Hang up right now. <laughs> you want to talk uh, flat Earth? Uh, why? Why? What the? <laughs> This is the issue, dude. This is why... Fuck, dude. Don't blame me, all right? You brought it up. He's the one who keeps bringing that shit up. Well, no, you I brought it up. Dude. Don't it's... fucking blame Mike for it, dude. You just brought up Flat Earth, dude. That's You just fucked I'm the whole just show. I'm just kidding. I'm going to yeah. shut the whole show down just because you fucking said Flat Earth, dude. <laughs> I think it's wicked funky. like that. I do, too, dude. It's great, dude. But, hey. So... <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. Dude. I'm fucking totally confused now that he brought up. <laughs> brought you, up are, fire, you are lit, dude. I, I dude, wait. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. When this like been drinking, dude, I like waited all fucking night to go down and get like a drink. <laughs> now I'm fucking the one that's lit, dude. You're bringing up flat earth. That's fucking. <laughs> I'm just mad now, dude. I'm not even like. That's just fucked up. You ruined the whole show. We had a great show, and you like flat Earth. <laughs> flat Earth. Oh, this, 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 this the last Earth. time I was on. This is the last time I was on. Yeah. We'll, 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 we'll regroup the show. Yeah. Um, well, that's what happened, dude. You came on there, and I was like, dude, I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> dude, that's what happened the last time I had Justin on. I was like, I don't know what to do, dude. Like, I don't know, dude. And I was confused, and I I shot the show down. <laughs> and Jeff, flatter, fuck you. Anyway, so uh, I'm so fucked up, dude. So, just oh, there you go. What's that, Justin? Did y'all know that the fifth, the fifth column took over Pontiac Tribune? It oh, really? Okay, so that's yeah. what I Hey. Hey, we have like 30 seconds left of the live show, so uh, anyone listening, dude, you can hear it on uh, tomorrow, blah, 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 uh, you'll hear it. Uh, we have an hour left. We're going to like blab for whatever until Justin wants to hang out, and that's all there is to it. So when the show gets cut off, just listen to within the next hour or tomorrow or whatever you want to do. Anyway, so uh, yeah. Say what you were going to uh, say. Check Justin. out the fifth column. Yes. Go ahead. So, so <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to wait for Justin to say something, and as soon as Justin starts talking, Michael will interrupt him. So that's what I'm. Oh, I'm for. sorry. What? what? Uh, <laughs> well, we did that to you. <laughs> what? Don't turn it on him, what? dude. So, yeah, so we took over, and we launched another site. So the fifth column now has three different sites. Is that why you're not we, associating with the uh, – what's what's up in the – associating with the uh, anti, an, uh, anti-media? Oh, no, no, no. We're still, we're still very cooperative. In fact, okay. I still write for them. They've had some of my articles on there. That's what I thought, week. but – I was I wasn't sure too because you didn't mention them earlier, so I was like, uh, I didn't want to say anything. Oh, no, 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 no. We're we're still everything is good. Awesome, uh, awesome, okay, good. Because I like the anti media and I like you, so keep it going. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, we've just been focusing on our expansions because we we added a new site called Sleeper Cells, which is the phase one of our radio and video operations. And then we took over the Pontiac Tribune. Good. And that will turn into the U.S. edition of the fifth column. 